Hey there, I'm that Scottish nerd that brings you Pokemon TCG content as well as gaming and entertainment related videos so if any of those interest you be sure to hit the subscribe button down below as I do upload videos multiple times a week and in this one we're having a look at the ladder rewards once again building a deck around Lugia GX. As always there are timestamps in the description if you want to jump ahead to the matches but first of all we're going to be looking at the deck profile. Let's start it off by having a look at the Pokemon that you get as the Ladder Reward. If you aren't familiar with it or haven't had a look at it already, we'll go through some of the main attacks that it has here. It does also have 190 hit points which is very nice for a basic GX Pokemon and definitely on the high end for a basic GX anyway. Its main attack that you're going to be using here is Pelagic Blade. For 4 colorless energy it does 170 damage and it's great for 2 hitting everything in the format, even the big VMAX Pokemon, you're going to be able to easily to hit those Pokemon. Its other main attack here is Lost Purge GX. For 3 colourless energy, you're able to put the defending Pokemon and all cards attached to it straight into the Lost Zone. If you're not familiar, the Lost Zone is just like the discard pile where cards go through the use of attacks and trainer cards, but once a card hits the Lost Zone, it is there for the rest of the game and there's no way to recover it. We also have an attack here called Psychic, which does a base of 30 and can deal additional damage based on your opponent's active Pokemon's energy. This can be nice to use after a Pelagic Blade, considering we can't use Pelagic Blade the following turn after we've used it, so we can always follow it up with Psychic. Now I do have 4 counts of the Lugia GX here, as it was a ladder reward previously, so I've been able to accumulate a whole playset of those. If you don't have a playset of any of these cards including Lugia then feel free to put in other cards that will be appropriate. Since this is a fire build perhaps you want to put in some fire GX Pokemon or other Pokemon that you enjoy using. As always this is just an inspiration to give you an idea for the kinds of things that you could do with the ladder rewards. But as you can see we do have a very straightforward and streamlined build for the deck we're using double colourless energy here since we have a colourless Pokemon. This is going to be fantastic for powering up our attacks as well as using Welder to get those energy on as quickly as possible and really accelerate energy every single turn. Welder of course lets you attach to energy from your hand and then draw three cards. So we're getting draw and energy acceleration. It's one of the best cards in the expanded format as well as standard format. To combo with the fire energy that we have, we have Giant Hearth, which allows us to search out two fire energy from our deck, and we also have Fiery Torch here, which allows us to discard a fire energy and draw two cards. Very nice item based draw, and you can never pass up solid item based draw. And to combo, we also have Fire Crystal here, which allows you to get back three basic fire energy from your discard pile. This is very nice after a Pokemon has been knocked out or if you've just been discarding it through Fiery Torch or even Giant Hearth. Then of course we have other consistency cards like Nest Ball and Trainer's Mail, very secure to ensure that we have a good amount of draw power. And we also have two copies of the Field Blower in order to get rid of our opponent's Chaotic Swells so we can put Giant Hearth into play. Finally the main card that I want to discuss is Fighting Fury Belt. This is great for that extra 10 damage so that you can knock out things like Crobat on the bench or anything else really with 180 hit points as well as getting that buff of 40 HP is always a nice bonus. If you do enjoy this style of video and it gives you some nice ideas for building a deck with the ladder rewards be sure to give the video a like down below as it really helps me out and we'll get into a couple of matches here and see if we can pull out a win. We're starting up this match against a fire beast deck from the looks of things. They have a couple of Scorch there on their bench so they're most likely trying to use the VMAX but they also have the Charizard V as well. It's definitely going to be a contest of who can get set up quicker because I'm guessing they're going to be using a welder to set up their board as well. So we have the nest ball for the extra Lugia. Unfortunately we don't have a welder which would be great here. So let's go with the Fiery Torch, we'll discard our energy, see what we get into. Nothing too great here, definitely was hoping for the Welder to get some energy accelerated. But we can Nest Ball and get another Lugia into play 
as well as a giant hearth and then professor of research to discard the hand and draw into fresh hand. Now this, this is workable, we'll go with this. And uh, we can definitely giant hearth here to discard an energy and get two more energy out the deck just to thin the deck a little. And then we can attach one somewhere. Uh, we don't have a huge amount of ways of being able to get into a welder. So I think just start attaching onto the active and then potentially next turn using that double colorless energy to actually get an attack off with either Psychic or Lost Purge. Uh, it's going to be great for keeping it in the match along with our opponent here. So they get the Charizard VMAX which does a huge amount of damage for 3 fire energy and a double colorless it does 300 damage so it's able to knock out a whole bunch of Pokemon but they are just going to be hitting this for 20 damage as well as that burn after using a Lysander from lots of things or perhaps using the giant hearth Oh no no, it was a Lysander because our uh, Lugia is now on the bench that has the energy. So I think if we continue to power up some of our Pokemon on the bench then we can have a retaliation against our opponent here. So we'll attach the double colorless onto our bench Lugia and we might as well put down our fourth Lugia, don't see why not. And then we can use Professor Research to get a new hand once again, hoping to get into Welder which we finally do, which is a good pick up and uh, we can make use of some of these trainer mails I think. We'll go with the fiery torch first just to discard the energy. I mean we don't really need anything off of the trainer's mail since they're just there for consistency in order to find our welders. So we'll pass over to our opponent, see what they have for us and yeah see if they have the Center Scorch VMAX perhaps. They have the Houndoom V. Can't remember if this has a VMAX or not. But they're going to be attaching to it so they definitely want to be attacking and dealing a bunch of damage with the Hound MV. They hit us for 100 and then pass it back over to us. So certainly using a Lost Purge now would be great to remove all of the energy that they've been attaching. So let's go ahead and go with that. We we'll use our Giant Hearth and get rid of a Trainer's Mill. That will allow us to search out two energy from the deck and use Welder to attach those. Putting both of them onto the active seems fine, as we do have things like Fire Crystal to recover some of our energy if we need it. And speaking of which, there is a Fire Crystal. Let's have a look at the discard. We have five energy in the discard. That's a quite a bit, so we'll just hold on to the rest for now. And we'll go with the Lost Purge GX. Putting the defending Pokemon and all cards attached to it into the Lost Zone so our opponent no longer has an attacker. And considering that they only have three cards in their hand, they're going to be requiring a supporter card to try and draw out of this and hopefully get into a reasonable attacker here. They do attach the energy onto the Center Scorch, but looks like that's all they have and they're just hitting into us for 20. They can also choose if they want to discard the energy from their Pokemon and if they do then they get to discard an energy from our Pokemon. That's exactly what they're going for here so they get to discard our double colorless which is fine by me as we have plenty of means of getting energy onto our active and we can definitely just attach a double colorless here I think. We can hit into the Center Scorch for 170 with Pelagic Blade again. Let's go for the Trainer's Melt and see if we can get ourselves a Useful card, I mean we have the Giant Hearth ready so we don't need that, we'll grab the Lysander, definitely hoping for another Fighting Fury belt there, but we'll settle with Lysander, and we could bring up the VMAX, but I think the Center Scorch is going to be their primary attacker if they want to go for that. So we'll definitely just settle with the Pelagic Blade, hitting them for 170, and then on the following turn we can go for the Psychic for 30. But of course we'll be missing a little bit of damage and they go for the Pokemon Center Lady anyway, healing 60 which is more than enough to get them out of range of his Psychic. So they go for the knockout, dealing that 20 damage which is enough to knock us out, that's why I wanted that Fighting Fury Belt to buff our HP. But it means that we're able to use the Pelagic Blade attack now to get the knockout on this Scorch. We can attach an energy onto it. 
as well as make use of Fire Crystal here to get 3 energy out the discard, and then use Welder to put those onto one of our Bench Lugias. Go for the Lugia here on the right. Now we draw into some more supporter cards, which is always welcome. We'll use the Trainer's Mail here and see if we can get, can get into something useful. We'll take the Field Blower just in case our opponent has a bunch of tool cards that they want to put down. And then we'll go with Pelagic Blade, getting the knockout on our opponent. Taking our first two prize cards of the match and certainly staying in this match for sure, since we're both tied on four prize cards. And my opponent has to promote the Charizard VMAX. And considering its attack costs are very high, they're not going to be doing a huge amount of damage. I mean, they could do 100 for 3 energy, but that's not particularly efficient, especially when we have Psychic available to us to hit into them. They go for an escape rope, so we can go into our bench Lugia that already has energy on it, for sure. And we have the welders available to get more energy into play. My opponent has a Litwick, so they're not going to be doing a huge amount with that. They're just using the escape rope to stall and put some energy onto their bench. Now we could retreat and use Lysander here, which I kind of like since we have the energy available. So we'll go with that, we'll retreat into our Lugia that has all the energy on it already. And then use Lysander to bring up that VMAX and hit into it with Pelagic Blade. Oh, we've not actually attached energy so I should probably remember to do that. We'll attach an energy and now we will use Pelagic Blade for 180 damage. Hitting into the Charizard and putting it in a great position because if they want to hit into us for the 100 damage, we can definitely make use of Psychic and get a retaliation back into them. Most likely for a knockout, I believe. But we'll see. We'll see what my opponent has. My opponent is chooses to concede. I guess they've had enough of our deck and they didn't have any options available to them. So we took our first win. Let's get into another one. We're starting off this match against a Snorlax V. My opponent goes first, but they don't actually do anything, which is a good sign for us. Or perhaps a bad sign if they have a bunch of good cards in their hand. We'll have to see. We're starting off with the Fiery Torch, which I'm going to use here, I think. Just to dig a bit deeper into our deck before using the Trainer's Mill. We get the Giant Hearth as well, so we can definitely thin some more cards out with that. Getting rid of the Lysander here and searching out 2 energy as we want to hit a welder off of this trainer's mail. Let's see if we do. Unfortunately we don't, we just get the field blower. So we'll have to settle with manually attaching and then using the N to reset our hand and hopefully get into a better hand for the following turn. We do get into the double welder, so that's excellent. Definitely what we want to see. And hopefully our opponent doesn't get rid of our giant hearth as we'll be able to use that in the following turn. Definitely going to nest ball for another Lugia into play and then pass over to our opponent. They are most likely playing the Snorlax VMAX as it does additional damage based on your benched Pokemon. And we'll have to see what their support and Pokemon are as well. My opponent also has the Lugia V, not VGX. Gonna get them mixed up now, but they also have the Lugia GX here, which is interesting. Also a interesting kind of fun deck, I'm guessing. They have the Cramorant V there, and they did attach to the Snorlax V, so perhaps they're looking to attack with it. They're just going to pass it back over to us, which is fine by me. The Snorlax V does have 220 hit points, and its attacks are very expensive, so we could always just hit into it for 170, or even use Psychic as well as a good option. Let's attach this energy, we'll use Giant Hearth to discard the Nest Ball. And we'll search out two energy so that we can use Welder to attach those energy. Definitely going to be attaching them onto the active so that we can make use of Psychic I think here. And we even get a double colorless energy as well. Well, a couple of those. So as I mentioned we'll use Psychic to hit into our opponent dealing 100 damage since they do have two energy. And we're dealing a base of 30 plus the Fighting for your battle is a base of 40. So 100 damage there. And then we can go into a Pelagic Blade on the following turn to get a knockout if my opponent doesn't go into the VMAX. Even with the Pokemon Center Lady, we will be able to get a knockout with Pelagic Blade here. We just needed that little bit of extra damage. 
but my opponent gets the switch and goes into the Cramorant, so they're going to be using the Beat Catch attack in order to search the deck for two cards. So my opponent searches out the two cards that they want. Unfortunately, we don't have any way of. I mean, we could use N if we want, I guess, to reset them. But I think going after that Snorlax is going to be much more effective for us. So we'll definitely use Lysander here to bring up the Snorlax. And then we're going to use Giant Hearth. We'll get rid of a Versus Seeker. We don't really need two of them. And we'll get our double energy. And we're going to be attaching one of those onto the active. And then we'll just use... I mean, we'll go with the Fiery Torch. Why not? We have Giant Hearth in play. We get into some more energies, so that's fine. And then we'll use Pelagic Blade here to get the knockout on the Snorlax V. Stopping them from going into the VMAX and taking two prize cards. We get an N and another Nest Ball is welcome. My opponent's going to be going back into the Cramorant V here, so they could always use Beat Catch again, or if they get the energy, they could actually use the second attack to deal 160 to one of our Pokemon. They also evolved there into the Eldegoss, so perhaps they want to start using that to attack with. We'll have to see. My opponent gets the energy attachment onto the Lugia GX of their own. Opting not to use Giant Hearth, perhaps they're not playing the Fire Energy or they just don't want to thin their hand of any cards. But going for the Beat Catch once again, searching their deck for any two cards they desire. Now seeing as we have the Double Colorless Energy in our hand already, we could just attach that onto the bench, which is definitely what I'm feeling, and then going with the N as that's going to reset my opponent's hand and get those cards out that they're searching so that they don't have them available. Unfortunately we won't be able to use Pelagic Blade on this following turn since we did just use it and we can't use it on a following turn. But we could always go with a Lost Purge GX which would get rid of this Cramorant or even just using the Psychic to do a little bit of chip damage. We could also retreat here I suppose and use Pelagic Blade on the bench but again our opponent's cram run has more HP than 180 so that wouldn't get the knockout either. Let's go with the Nest Ball and we'll get a third Lugia into play, attaching the double colorless onto our bench one that we're already powering up and we'll go with N as I mentioned. We are going down to a lower hand size but that's fine as we're resetting our opponent's hand as well. We get into a bunch of supporters here, which is fine by me, as we can discard one of those in order to search out two fire energy from our deck, and we can always make use of Wilder on this following turn. Now, if we want to go with a Psychic or Pelagic Blade here, I think if we use Psychic, we're going to be setting ourselves up for a Pelagic Blade knockout on the following turn, since they only have the one energy. So let's go with a Psychic, and then we'll follow up with the Pelagic Blade, as I mentioned. My opponent puts down a Salamence V. This is able to spread a whole bunch of damage with the first attack there. We're going to be attaching a Muscle Band onto the Lugia GX. Definitely a good consideration for this deck if you're building a Lugia GX deck with a lot of rewards. Muscle Band is a good option for being able to hit more damage with Psychic and as well as doing 190 damage with Pelagic Blade. But my opponent's going to be using the Beat Catch once again, third time in a row, and able to search out two cards. But that's fine by me, as we're going to be getting a knockout on this Cramorant anyway. So we're going to be able to start accelerating energy onto our third benched Lugia, putting those two fire energy on, and we even get the double colorless energy to boot, which is excellent. We can use Giant Hearth here to discard our other Giant Hearth, Search out our last energy to thin it from the deck and use Pelagic Blade, get that Cramorant out of here and we'll go down to two prize cards remaining. So we only have to knock out one more two prizer in order to win the game here. Let's see what my opponent brings into the active spot. I think a good two hit KO here will set us up to win the game. We could always Lost Purge still if we want to get rid of a big threat that they power up. But considering they have been pretty slow at attaching energy, then I'd say that our decks are pretty fairly balanced. 
and we're at the same power level, although we definitely have been at an advantage with our energy acceleration through a welder. If I could bring up the Eldegoss here, let's see what the Eldegoss does. It does have Blessing of Fluff, which allows you to search your deck for up to 3 grass energy and attach them to your Pokemon in any way that you like, and then shuffle your deck. So they're most likely going to be going with that in order to accelerate some energy onto their bench Pokemon. But again, that is very slow for them, and they're going to be losing another Pokemon to our attack if they do that. We also see the Ore Beetle V from our opponent, and they use Dirt Field in order to search out another Grass type evolution Pokemon. And we see the Blessing of Fluff in order to search their deck for those three Grass Energy. Let's see where they go. They go into the Dub Wheel. Two onto the Elf Wool, and a third onto the Ore Beetle V. Very interesting. We get a Field Blur, which could be useful. I think we'll use that to get rid of our opponent's stadium, as well as that Muscle Band that they attached earlier onto the Lugia. It would have been nice here if we had got a Lysander in order to get an initial hit on our opponent, as well as the fact that we don't really need any of these energy at this point, although I suppose we could set up a fourth Lugia. We might as well since it is in the deck and we do have all of this energy and it doesn't look like my opponent is going to be getting rid of any of our energy. Even if they do, we do have the fire crystals available to us in the deck still. So we might as well attach all of this energy here, have all four Lugia set up and ready to go. And we can Lost Purge I guess just to get this out of here. Or alternatively we could just Psychic. It's not really going to matter if we get a knockout on this Eldegoss. So we'll just Psychic into it, and if my opponent retreats, we can use Pelagic Blade on the following turn, on whatever two prizes they promote. So my opponent attaches onto the Double V, looks like they're probably going to be trying to attack with it, which is very respectful, as it does have an ability which reduces damage onto it, so it could be a good way of trying to get some decent damage into us considering they haven't actually done any damage throughout this game, they've had a very slow deck. They do get the knockout as they're dealing 240 damage, even with our Fighting Fury Bell, that's 10 more damage than we have HP. But we can get a response here by using Virtue Seeker and getting some damage onto something else with a Lysander, or we could always just use Lost Purge to get this double into the Lost Zone, so they're really stuck for attackers definitely a reasonable decision. We can use Fiery Torch here to discard a fire and draw two cards. There is that fire crystal I was mentioning earlier. But well, well, we'll just go with the Lost Purge here to get this Dub Wheel out of here. I don't want to be dealing with that because if we hit into it then they're going to be getting a return knockout dealing like 240 damage. So definitely we don't want to deal with that and we can force up a different Pokemon from our opponent and they bring up the Lugia GX of their own, so it's going to be the battle of the Lugias. Let's see what they have for us, if they're going to use Pelagic Blade into us, we can use it back into them, or even using Psychic as well is a good option. We see Sonia from our opponent getting two Grasps energy, as well as that Butterfree V. We could always retreat here as well if my opponent chooses to hit into us, that would help protect our Lugia. We see an energy switch, Let's see where they choose to put it, they're putting it onto the Butterfree. And we see an attack from our opponent using the Pelagic Blade of their own in order to hit us for 170 damage. And we do get an additional Fighting Fury Belt, which is great. Now we could make use of Psychic as we'd be doing 150-160 well, damage, although using Pelagic Blade here is definitely going to be more damaging. So let's go ahead and retreat, we only have to discard a double colourless and we can reattach that energy as well, might as well, we don't really have any reason not to. And we'll hit into our opponent with Pelagic Blade of our own, dealing 180 damage. If my opponent wants to use Psychic that's fine as we're going to be able to get a knockout on this Lugia GX. Even if they retreat we do have the Versus Seeker for Lysander in order to close out this match here. My opponent gets into the Butterfree VMAX, which is a reasonable attacker, definitely not the best, and it's not doing as much damage as some of the other Pokemon that they have in play, like the Lugio. 
but if they don't get this Lugia out of the active, then they're going to be in a bad spot. All I can really do is assume that we don't have the Lysander, but of course we know that we do. You're going to be using Versus Seeker, search a supporter card out of the discard pile. They go for a Cynthia once again. Feels like that's the only supporter card they've played this game. They've got Cynthia, Sonya and Pokemon Center Lady. Definitely not a great amount of supporter cards, so perhaps my opponent is also just a beginner and starting out. We see the Salamence VMAX there. It's a very good attacker to be using. We also see the Orbital VMAX. Very nice Pokemon. I really love the ability on that Orbital VMAX. Spreading 10 damage across all of your opponent's Pokemon is very powerful. We see a revive from my opponent, bringing back a Cramorant V from the discard pile. And we'll have to see here what attack they go for or if they choose to retreat. We do see the retreat from our opponent. They opted to discard all of their energy, which they didn't need to. And they do hit us for 150 damage with the Butterfree VMAX. And it also hits us with a bunch of special conditions. But that's fine, as we do have the Lysanders in here, so we can make use of the Ly. Uh, we can make use of Versus Seeker, grabbing the Lysander, and we're going to bring up that benched Lugia that we hit into on this previous turn, and then we can just discard two of these energy in order to retreat, and hit with Plagic Blade once again to finally close out this game. My opponent conceding, as they know that we've won. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a comment with your thoughts on the deck and your ideas for Lugia GX if you're going to be using it in a deck. I'll see you in the next video.